Hey guys, it's Mathel here once again, and I get asked quite often uh, what are good builds to start a new league out, or first character sort of builds, and as Prophecy comes out in about 12 hours, I wanted to show you a few of the builds that I would be comfortable starting a character with, or a brand new league with, without any gear, without currency, and it uh, should be fairly smooth to level all the way through and perform relatively well in the end game. So these are a few of the builds that I would start out with and maybe you could get some ideas from here as well and have a good start to the Prophecy League or any league in general. First build I wanted to show off is this Blade Vortex life-based assassin. If you've been following my builds this is essentially exactly the same build as the assassin dual void battery character I made that used no whirling blades and used two wands, that is void batteries, to perform blade vortex and just strictly run around in. The version I recommend to actually play and start out with does not involve void batteries but that is of course the end game goal for the build. Currently this build can perform very well and function to about half the level of DPS of void batteries just by wearing two divinariuses. They are very good starting league items, or daggers, for this type of build, but ultimately you're going to be going for something more like this dagger here, with high spell crit, some spell damage, crit multi, and spell crit. Now, that's what you're looking for, but ultimately you do want to do some void batteries. You can run a shield if you really want, but you should be able to squeeze out just enough damage with a shield or with dual wield, without void batteries, whatever you really want, and play this build fairly effectively. It's an assassin, so you get your power charges quite comfortably just by running around and using a blade vortex, thanks to this node here, which gives you 10% chance to gain a power charge on a non-crit. In the end, you scale large amounts of crit through your power charges and crit multi via the power charges, and you should be running something like 80% crit when all your power charges are up, which should be pretty much always as long as you're running around killing things. The build does become fairly tanky with 6k life, and you can pretty much see a lot more videos about this build on my YouTube. It is the Void Battery Blade Vortex from a couple of weeks ago. So there's 86 crit, just with two fairly modest Divinariuses, running a carcass jack, plenty of AoE. The 5 link you're going to be looking for is... Blade Vortex, Duration, Control Destruction, Spell Echo, and Increased Area. Feel free to sub in Conk Effect over Increased Area for strictly boss fights, and that'll kill things a lot quicker. We're using Face Breakers to get a lot more Crit Multi. These are Legacy, but you're supposed to have 90 Crit Multi on your Face Breakers. Everything else is pretty normal gear, and you can see it all on my Build guide list, if you go somewhere near the bottom, you will find Void Battery Blade Vortex, and as I said, you don't have to have Void Batteries here. You can use a couple of daggers, you can use some weaker ones, that will certainly still do the trick. And here is the ideal gear, or the gear that I could get during the Parandus League for this sort of build, and the flasks you're going to be running. Now ideally you're going to go for a Taste of Hate, that's... The, probably one of the most expensive items for the build, but it is a very strong defensive and offensive buff. When looking at the passive tree, as you can see, it is fairly straightforward, just a nice crit life based build, involving plenty of life nodes, plenty of AoE nodes, crit nodes, and some vile packed goodness so you can leech up instantly. Now, bear in mind these are all fairly important over here and over here to keep enough dexterity for the blade vortex as it levels up. You want all the power charges on the tree, 1, 2, and 3, including the one from Merciless Alira, because that is how you scale most of your damage while being an assassin, thanks to Deadly Infusion. With the addition of two extra passive points, you are probably going to want to get to Toxic Delivery in your last four points, because you get Poison You Inflict with Critical Strikes deals 100% more damage, now what that means is you are going to want to attach poison into your end up end game setup, and once you get those that eighth point and can manage a six link, I would recommend attaching poison as your sixth link. You will almost always be critting, so 
your poison, we'll be doing an extra 100% more damage, and we do have some scaling through chaos over here, and that should be enough to make toxic delivery pretty goddamn strong, but you can shift the tree around a bit more to go up here, or grab something like these two points over here, for example, just to make your poison a bit more effective when you actually get to this stage and when you can get a sixth link. Now leveling this tree is fairly straightforward once again and very easy because Blade Vortex is super strong. What you're going to want to do is essentially go here, down this way, over here. At this point, if you feel like you need more life while leveling, and you probably will, grab these two points and then travel down here and grab all of those. You then go down to the Witch Tree, you get those two, you grab the AoE, go over here, grab this Power Charge, grab this Life through these crit nodes and go straight into the Templar tree, grab the last bit of AoE, at which point you'll probably go down here and grab Potency of Will, and then this life, and then fill out the rest of the tree as you see fit. It should be a very strong starter class, and one that can keep on scaling with more currency and gear, as you have things to go for like Six Links, Taste of Hate, Void Batteries, High Level Gems, and Good Enchants and all that. Now that is just simply one take on a life-based Blade Vortex build starting from an assassin point, but there are a couple of other strong starting points if you would rather, like for example Pathfinder, because it does have quite a lot of nice flask benefits for poison, immunities, extra flask charges, all of that, and a lot of people do really fancy the Pathfinder as the best life-based Blade Vortex. If you were to do that, you would simply start down here, from these life nodes, travel here and then travel through there. There's a bit of waste going on, but it's not that big a deal because you do make it up over with the cool Pathfinder nodes, and you'd have to sacrifice a bit of something else, like probably some life, for example. One other type of Blade Vortex that is very nice, I would think, after looking at the tree, is a Slayer. There is a bit of waste to start with because of the nodes you have to take, but overall the tree ends up looking fairly similar to the Assassin one regardless, and the strength in the Slayer tree ends up being from the Ascendancies of gaining Onslaught for 20 seconds, gaining Cull that is 20% strong, having nice Reflect, almost immunity I would say with 50% reduced, 20% more when you kill recently, and 20% more radius or increased radius if you've killed recently. As well as that, you can also grab another 20% radius there. So 40% extra radius for Blade Vortex is essentially the AoE gem, which is quite insane and very strong. The biggest problem with the Slayer version is that there's a lot of traveling to start with and you don't really scale damage early on at all. So it might start out fairly slow on the damage side of things. And that's something to be careful for as your first character, but overall it can actually be an interesting Blade Vortex starter. And that'll be it for the Blade Vortex builds, and we move on to... Pizza Blast! As we all know, good old-fashioned Flame Blast Prolif has been an absolute league stomper in the past, and that is because Prolif was very strong, Flame Blast had a great amount of radius, and the clear speed was insane for the amount of investment you had to put into this sort of build. Ever since Prolif got nerfed, it was kind of fallen out of favor, but Prolif has been rebuffed, and Elementalist itself, with Conflux, its own free radius, and other perks that it now has, makes this a very strong starter build again, and probably just overall racer for the entire league. This is obviously Dried Lake, and this character is wearing barely anything. This will be a fully fire version, rather than going chaos like we did in the past um, Parantis League. And this is just a proof of concept of how this build should run, should function, and should work. What you do, run around, click your Flame Blast, you'll have Prolifts, you'll have Confluxes, and it'll go really well. Conversely, you can also try, if you really would rather, play with Firestorm, a very similar sort of concept. You'll probably just need a single target sort of setup in the end, I think. And that may be potentially Flame Surge, but Firestorm or Flame Blast or Pizza Blast, both are very strong with the Elementalist and should be absolute just monsters off of low amounts of gear and all the way through leveling, especially once you get Conflux going at around 
Level 35 with the normal ascendancy. Now for this setup, what currently looks to be like the best six link or the way to set up the character is to run Flame Blast, Ellie Prolif, Increased Area, Fire Pen, Controlled Destruction, and then Faster Casting as your six link. Now the reason we go Ellie Prolif is because the Witch Passive Beacon of Ruin, while good and buffed from 9 to 12, doesn't get the full effect of Ellie Prolif the way it does in your setup. Because the new Ellie Prolif will have 16 radius, but it also gets affected by your increased area of effect gem, meaning you'll have even bigger radius, and it also allows you to actually open up and go for this over here, Mastermind of Discord, while at the same time still getting the Reflect more or less immunity or just safety from Paragon of Calamity. So what you should be going for is Elemental Conflux, which is absolutely insane for your clear speed, and then most likely going, depends if you can get 8 points or not, but Mastermind of Discord will give you 25% fire pen every time you use a lightning skill. Now those triggers could be something like Lightning Warp or Orb of Storms with a curse on hit and whatever curse you want. Just something like that, or Orb of Storms with power charge on crit, or just crit strikes to proc your elemental overload even easier for the build. So that allows you to drop Beacon of Ruin altogether, and this six link becomes very effective and efficient in the way you set up your character and the way you end up dealing damage. I would say Faster casting is my personal sixth link, but you can play around with it whichever ones of this setup you want. I just do think the staple should be Flame Blast, Ellie Prolif, and that's about it. Probably Fire Pen. That's your three staples. You pick whichever ones you want to go for the fourth, fifth, and sixth link out of these. That, however, is not to say you cannot get Beacon of Ruin. If you would rather, you can use Beacon of Ruin, drop your Ellie Prolif. You will, of course, have to sacrifice either the Reflect Almost Immunity, which I think no one really wants to do, or Mastermind of Discord, which is probably the obvious answer. So you still get that instead of Ellie Prolif. And that frees up one extra gem in your setup, which can be replaced with something like Burning Damage, or Empower, or whatever else you really freaking want to. Maybe you want to go Conk Effect, I'm not quite sure. And that also does mean you deal don't have to deal with that pesky 22% less damage, or 20% less at level 20. But it's kind of up in the air, I think I would probably play with Ellie Prolif at this stage. The passive tree is extremely easy to navigate and build towards as you have damage and life just about around every corner. The only real notable thing to mention is you will be going for Whispers of Doom so that you can run a Warlord's Mark Blasphemy plus another sort of curse. Now what that curse is will probably be up to you. It can be flammability, it can be temp chains, it can be enfeeble. That is fairly open-ended. I would personally probably go temp chains just because that is a very strong defensive buff, and I don't think I'm going to need more damage in the form of flam flammability or anything else. Now, other than that, we get lots of fire damage all over the tree and lots of life all over the tree, and we travel around here. To start off with, if you're going to level this build, it's very easy. You probably use Firestorm as soon as you can, and Flame Blast whenever else you want to, but Flame Blast should be a faster clearer in the long run. You start out by going this way, up here, straight up and grabbing this life. You grab the area, then this life over here. After that, I would navigate towards the Templar tree to grab all the area and life down here, and probably start grabbing this life and going over here for that sort of damage. Past that, it's kind of up to you. You can start going up and grabbing damage, or going over to the Shadow Tree for more damage and life, or go all the way down here for life. Basically, all you really should be doing is starting as a witch, grabbing everything in the witch area, and then going to the Templar area. Past that, it's up to you what you want to do. As I said, Elemental Overload, that'll be there for 40% more Ellie damage. If you start using Orb of Storms, if you feel like you need it, and you probably will be just to keep up Mastermind of Discord. This should be a very fast build with few gear requirements, and one that should scale right into the endgame as you can get all kinds of damage, 
Life is absolutely not an issue. I could play this one or the Blade Vortex build on Hardcore fairly comfortably, I would think. And next up is my pretty generic Earthquake Berserker Marauder, but you can use pretty much any two-hand skill in this setup, as they are all very similar and rather generic of a setup with pretty much all two-hand weapons and all two-hand skills. It just so happens that Earthquake is pretty much the strongest thing you can play right now as far as melee skills and two-hand skills go. This is taken straight from the previous YouTube video I made of the starter build Earthquake Berserker Marauder, and that is because not much has really changed for this build at all. Essentially from last patch to this one, all that happened is Berserker became a little bit stronger in terms of their ascendancy, and Earthquake Helm Enchant was nerfed by like 10%, which is barely anything to worry about whatsoever for the vast majority of us. So this build is very cheap, very effective, and a great starter character when you have absolutely no currency, and just to plow through the game up until pretty much end game, and even play on hardcore, and even use as a slayer, which has been rather buffed recently. And I'll go over that in just a second to show off exactly what you're looking to do with this character and um, how to play it and build it, more importantly. So this is what our two-hand Ber Berserker Marauder character passive tree looks like. It is currently specced into maces because it's kind of a personal preference. I just figured I'd like a bit more radius and harder hitting for my earthquake when making this character. But you can, of course, go axes just by skipping this wheel and taking this wheel instead. That's essentially the only change you'll ever have to make. Probably drop that as well and rearrange the passive tree just a bit to accommodate. So what changed with Berserker is um, you now have actual flat leech here. You have an extra 1% leeched as life and 1% leeched as mana all the time. So that will absolutely take care of all of your mana leech and that 1% leech as life is actually rather huge. Because normally you do get quite a bit of uh, physical leech but this will also count your elemental leech which is a large part of your damage. And then on top of that, you get up to 3% total leech while you're killing rather quickly, as it says recently in the past 4 seconds. Besides that, nothing else has changed, still really just strong damage. And you'll probably choose whichever one of these two you want. I reckon I'd probably take these at this point. It uh, should be a bit better, just for utility, for your last 2 points if you get to your 8. So... Essentially, you will start out this character as a Marauder. Level through here, you'll go Sunder to level with, and eventually swap into Earthquake. Probably at around level 40, when you can get a less duration gem, you'll swap out of Sunder or Sweep if you were leveling as Sweep, and start using Earthquake. So I would probably, personally, recommend you start this way, grab these life nodes, go up here, grab these two uh, life nodes here, and then go straight up to the Templar tree for this life and this AoE, and then probably this life. Now try and avoid grabbing specific nodes, like maces over here, or over here, or axes if you're going axes early on, because you don't know what kind of weapons you're going to find. Maybe you'll find an absolute baller axe, but you spec into maces, and you'd rather start using axes. So try and keep your damage fairly generic by using two-hand nodes, Area damage, melee damage, physical damage. So start out by grabbing that, going here, going up here and grabbing that. And then you'll go to the duelist tree and fill that out. And then fill this out and that out. Now, if you want to start as a slayer, all you've got to do is drop that there and pick up these here. So just sub 5 points for 5 points. And you will pick up some pretty sweet slayer stuff. Now what you should take is this, 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 and then probably those two. Alternatively, you could drop these if you really feel like you don't need the extra area and go for a whole bunch of extra leech stuff, because it might be super beneficial. Haven't really tried it out. It should be good, but I may well be going extra area just for 40% more. So that's essentially what a EQ Zerka is going to look like. And it's really easy to start out and really strong to level with. 
Next up will be our Lacerate Slayer, and all we have to go by so far is just the demo video that they've released of Lacerate, but by the looks of it, it could actually be a pretty strong skill, and we're going with Slayer because I think you're going to want to scale as much AoE as possible to enjoy the skill to the end game, and if it doesn't work out quite that well, then we can always just sub into something like Earthquake, all the same, but still at least try this out and potentially become a sweep. I think this should be okay though. As mentioned before, the main benefits of Slayer are your 20% cull, your onslaught for 20 seconds, and Fizz Reflect, which is pretty important. 20% more damage if you're killing quickly, 20% area if you're killing quickly, and as well as just 20% area while actually running around killing shit. All the time, actually, is what I meant to say. And then you grab a bit of extra leech, or freaking that if you really want to. I'm not too fussed with the last two points for this build. So what will happen is Lacerate looks like it's going to be sort of a weaker version of Reeve for AoE, so you're going to want to scale as much AoE as possible, but it does look like it should hit harder. So for this one, since Lacerate has less attack speed attached to it, we went with Swords. Now your choice is swords or axes, but I'm going swords just because swords end up scaling attack speed a little better through their um, passive nodes here and over here a bit too. You just get a little bit more attack speed and swords in general themselves are actually a bit faster. The tree is very similar to the Berserker Earthquake tree and ultimately if this build fails you can, um, or if Lacerate itself fails, you can start playing with Sweep or Ice Crash, and it will still be a decent build by all means. Now when we're leveling this character, once again, you want to keep it pretty generic in case you find an axe and want to spec into axes instead. So you take that wheel instead of this wheel, and you drop that and take this. What you do is you just level. It's very straightforward. Go here, grab this stuff here, go straight over here, through here, through here, through there, through here and go straight up to Templar, and then start filling out the life and the rest of the damage, and grab Resolute Techniques whenever you are actually starting to run low on hit chance. It's very straightforward, you will just run some armor gear, you'll probably be going Hatred as your aura, and I would think a Blasphemy Vulnerability, or just a Herald of Ash with some unreserved mana for all your mana needs. Um, to actually be able to attack with your mana, I think you're going to want some gloves with mana leech on them, or a ring, or a neck. Because if you can't get any of that, you're going to have to go over here and grab three points, just for this one piddly node. But you do what you got to do. If you have to do that, you'll have to do that. Alternatively, we will be trying out a dual wield lacerate, because maybe that's the right answer. But the build I've made here, non-crit dual lacerate, doesn't really scale dual too much. You just get some nodes over here and here. But in general, you just get the same sort of one-hand nodes, um, replacing the two-hand nodes. Still the sword nodes, still the sword nodes here. Scale plenty of attack speed through this sort of thing. And the problem with this is, as a first build, you're going to have to get two swords instead of one. So this has potential to be good and... A fast clearing build, a similar sort of way to the two hand build, but just a little more gear required because you'll have to get two swords instead of the one, and that may become a problem, but it should still be fun all the same. If that fails, you could always turn this into a Reeve build or you could turn it into a Cleave build because I think with all this extra Slayer bullshit AoE, you should be able to make Cleave actually not as awful as it currently is. That's Cleave's main problem. Not the damage, it's just the fact that its AoE is very lackluster compared to something like Reeve. Last up, we have our Frostbolt and Vortex skills, which are also brand new, so all we have to go by once again are these demo videos. But by the looks of it, I think it'll be one of the faster clearing cold skills at the moment, which are in a sort of uh, rough patch compared to, let's say, Fire and lightning spells as far as clear speed is concerned. I think these skills should fix that up a bit. And the way we're going to build this one is through an elementalist, which is probably just the easiest way of building a spellcaster right now. But if you want to make, you can also go an inquisitor. 
So bear in mind we don't have too much idea of how well this is going to go yet, but by all accounts I think it should be okay, and it'll probably work out to some extent just because Elementalis is OP regardless. Now we're going to want to grab the Prolif and the Conflux, that of course is a staple, because I don't think you want to waste a Prolif gem for this, these sorts of skills, but Prolif should help a lot with your Conflux all the same. So that's a solid four points right there. And I think you're going to want Mastermind of Discord. I'm not sure we're going to need Reflect Damage Reduction here for some reason. So we are going for Mastermind of Discord. But if you feel like you need it, just grab that and you won't grab Mastermind of Discord. We'll see how we go. Either way, that's something for you guys to decide as you play along throughout the build. What the build looks like is it's just non-crit. The base crit of these spells isn't very high, so we're going to try and make a non-crit one and go with Elemental Overload, just because essentially the non-crit builds are much easier to level and scale in the early game up until a certain level of map, at which point maybe you want to start specking into crit and redoing your passive tree, but just being a nice non-crit um, cold build with Elementalist should actually be fairly smooth all the way through. Now, similar sort of way to level this as the other in, um, caster I showed you. And what you're going to do is just go through here, grab this life, grab this AoE, probably grab this life, and then go straight to the Templar tree to grab that life, this life, that life, and probably start grabbing this damage. Then I think you would most likely get your second curse so that you can start running. I would imagine you'd go Warlord's Mark and probably Frostbite. I'm not sure you would need Temp Chain since you are using cold spells. It should help you at least uh, mitigate some of the damage through chill and potentially some freeze. But if you want, I think the second curse is really up to you can go Elemental Weakness, uh, Frostbite, Enfeeble, Temp Chains, all of the above. Then jump down here and start grabbing Life. Not too sure if we're going to need Duration yet, because we don't really know how the skill works out in full. Uh, maybe we'll need Dot Damage as well. That's something we'll figure out as we go when figuring out Vortex and Frostbolt. But that's kind of just the skeleton or the general tree I would use for something like that to get started and to see how it feels. We get plenty of life, we get plenty of uh, damage scaling, cold, elemental, and spell. So that'll just about conclude the sort of league starter builds I would recommend you do. There are plenty of other skills and builds you can do, things like totems are rather good, let's say Shockwave Totem, Flame Totem, those are very strong starters as well. Traps and Saboteurs are great starters too. Um, saboteurs over here, great starters too. But I don't really play Traps or Totems, so I can't highly recommend anything from me. But you should be able to find several guides out there for those types of builds. Pathfinders are usually great starts. Just about every single build with Pathfinder will scale rather nicely. Deadeye is always a good choice if you want to play something like a ranged character with bows or a wander. Deadeye helps you scale your gear or make gear requirements a lot less harsh. The problem is I just wouldn't really start out with bow as a first character because it is immensely slow when you have absolutely no currency compared to the other builds I just listed for you. So do that at your own risk. You certainly can go bows. But be careful because it won't ramp up into good damage until about level 50 or 60 once you start getting a lot of the passives for those trees. All of the builds should be rather hardcore viable if you want to take them into hardcore. But I will probably be playing them on softcore and adjust them accordingly. If you feel like you need more life or more defenses, feel free to rejig the passive tree a bit. These are by no means completed builds, they're just sort of guidelines to how to start a league and a character for having absolutely no currency and for initial farming. So that's it from me guys, thank you very much for watching, I hope this helped to some extent, and good luck in Prophecy League. See you guys next time.